Welcome to class tonight, Empower Yourself and Others. And I just love sharing this information. It's made a huge difference in my own life, with the people in my life, and also with when you're in a situation that you're working with different personality types and different people. Um, tonight, we're gonna be sharing some of the keys to empowerment. Keep in mind that there's actually a bigger, much bigger tool set. So tonight is just like the tip of the iceberg. But with each piece that you learn and employ in your life, um, life gets easier and you find greater effectiveness for the people that you're working with and also with yourself. So as we're going through the coursework tonight, keep in mind that any of these things we're kind of talking in terms of working with other people, but all of these things can also be applied specifically to yourself as well. When we think of empowerment, we recognize, and you probably have people in your own life, that really stand out as great mentors. And what makes a great mentor? Well, mentors really build belief. And one of the experiences that I first recognized a great mentor was in my own life, in that space between high school and college and really looking at uh, what are the decisions that I'm making in my life? How do I know what to follow? How do I know how to move forward? And I was having this conversation, I was actually driving with my mom and having this conversation, I was, I just don't know what to do. I'm so confused. There's so many options. How can I make a, de a decision? And she didn't try to fix me or make it better or tell me what to do. She simply looked at me and said, well, you'll figure it out. And there was something in that moment. There was some, something that clicked for me in that moment that was so profound that I recognized yeah, I could figure it out. It was something that I would that I would be able to handle. But it was something even more profound than that. It was almost that I borrowed her belief in myself to figure this thing out. And so sometimes those moments that are so small can make a big difference in what we focus on, how we show up and what we're aware of and what makes the difference over the course of our life. So as you think back to some of your own mentors in your life, some of the people that inspired you to be yourself, that inspired you to develop your gifts or talents, or maybe it was a friend that held a belief for you in yourself when you weren't, um, weren't holding that belief for yourself. So this is kind of the first principle, the number one principle, is to build belief. Belief in yourself. And so many self-help books out there will tell you, oh, the number one key to success is to believe in yourself. But how do we do that? People don't tell you how to believe in yourself. And in fact, it's kind of a mystery. Either you have it or you don't. Or maybe you grew up with great parents and they instilled that sense of confidence and belief. Or maybe you didn't grow up with the parents that instilled confidence and belief. But as we'll see tonight, that there are several ways that our mind picks up these different messages. Um, but keep in mind that no matter what uh, messages you've had till now, at the place where you are now, you are in a place that you get to choose what ideas you keep, what beliefs you keep. And with the tools of NLP and coaching, it becomes much easier to sort through the old ideas of the past and to build into the bigger beliefs of who you are becoming. What is next for you in this adventure of life and where you're going, how you're moving forward? So let's take a look at what is empowerment. Just to break down that word and get a little more insight. So empower can be a verb. To give power or authority to. Authorize, I empower my employees to make the decision. Or another form of it is to enable or permit. 
I empower myself to learn from my mistakes. So sometimes when we think of empowerment, and empowerment in this form tends to be a noun. Uh, empowerment is a thing, but it's kind of an intangible thing. You can't put it in a wheelbarrow. It's not a solid thing. And how do we know when we're feeling empowerment or when we're empowered versus when we're not? So the first place is to kind of look at your life. Look at where in your environments do you feel empowered? Empowered can be a feeling. Most of us recognize it as a feeling, but it's also a belief. And we're going to cue into this a little bit more as we go through. Empowered is also a state of mind. And you can see the pictures here of the people who are picketing. They have some feeling, some state of mind, also an attitude that they can uh, let their voice be heard, that they are taking these um, sentiments to the streets and making a, uh, a show of what their opinions are and what their stance is. So it's even more than a state of mind, it's also an attitude. Now an attitude can be running kind of in the background, kind of a, a frame for your mind, if you will. And I would also like to encourage you to think of empowerment as a process. So as we'll break it down today, there's several different layers of empowerment, but as you kind of keep these things in mind, um, that we can feel empowered, we can have a belief that we're empowered, a state of mind, an attitude, but also a process. But with each key in this tool set that you begin to use and employ, that not only you become more aware of your own personal power and ability to create in your life, but you are also better able to inspire others to build and create what they want in them in their lives for themselves as well. So now that we recognize empowered, let's look at its opposite. And a lot of times this is where people uh, recognize it most. Um, when we're on the positive side of things, we don't really recognize that there's necessarily a problem. But on the negative side of things, we uh, notice them. It's like the thorn in the shoe that, or the little tiny pebble in your shoe that when you walk, you feel it. So where do we feel unempowered? Well, there's many different areas of life and we can have a different sense of empowerment in each area. You might think about where you feel unempowered um, at home or at work, or maybe there are certain people that when you have conversations, you get that feeling. Maybe it's with a spouse or a friend, or maybe it's even with yourself and with understanding your own motivations or your own mind and attitudes. So here on this right-hand side, we have a picture of the life balance wheel. This comes from the coaching field, and it really helps us to break down. Here's an overview of your life, and I like to put the you in the center of the wheel which represents you are really what's going on in your mind, your brain is affecting all of these places of your life. And the more clear we can get with that core of you, the center of you, the easier it is to find what works for us in these other places of our life. So in the places where we're feeling unempowered, we typically recognize those as kind of the problem areas, or the areas that we want to change or focus on. So here's more of the, these are the blocks of empowerment, but they're also more like the symptoms. So when you recognize these symptoms in your life, you probably have some level of feeling unempowered in that area of your life. So areas where you're lacking responsibility or where others are lacking responsibility. Um, it can kind of go both ends of the spectrum there. So if something, and along with that is the next one, blame and criticism. So when these are um, active, this lack of responsibility, we also see this pattern of blame and criticism. And 
blame is we kind of at the underlying core of it, we want to know who's responsible, who made the decision. But often we see responsibility has multiple levels to it. So say you're shopping with a friend and the friend uh, picks up something and puts it in their pocket and you guys get caught for shoplifting. Well, you can blame your friend for shoplifting, but there's also your responsibility is that you were also chose to be with this friend that maybe had that attitude that it was okay to steal. So I'm sure that there's other places you can recognize in your life as well. So when so that's one block is not accepting responsibility or blame is passing the responsibility to somewhere else or criticism kind of goes along with that. Now the next one is fear and we have a couple of fears outlined here. Fear of taking action, fear of making a decision. Now underlying those fears are usually these uh, fear of making a mistake. The fear of failure is so, so huge for people. It keeps so many people from launching a business, developing a talent, stepping into a career because they're afraid they're going to fail. Um, I tend to think that our, our school system is based a lot on correction. You have to have the right answer. There's only one way. Uh, we get marks on our paper for having mistakes. So we kind of have developed this fear of mistakes over time. Well, and there's a, an analogy that I really like to use here that helps people to recognize uh, how to get over this fear of mistakes is the image of a bicycle. If you were to give a child a bicycle, how many chances would they get to learn to ride the bicycle? Well, they'd get as many as it takes, wouldn't they? And if they fell off the bicycle, would you say that they had failed? No, the child is still in the process of learning and figuring things out. And even when he falls off the bicycle, they're still making updates. Their mind is still learning about the bicycle. Their mind is still figuring out that process. And even it's learning about coordination and muscle control, steering and balance. And the next time it gets on the bicycle, the child is even more prepared to be more successful. And so you can even think of an image of a bicycle that life is a process and everything in life is a process of learning and growing and figuring it out. And we can recognize that all of the places where we've fallen off the bicycle in the past, we're in the process of learning about what works for us, what doesn't work for us. For anyone who's learned to play a musical instrument, for anyone who has learned to um, do photography or anything that's creative, there's a whole process that builds your skill set. And that process, that skill set, is for anywhere in life. Everywhere in life, there is a skill set to developing mastery in that skill. Now, some things come easier than others, that's true. Um, but the places where we struggle, we are typically learning at a deeper level. So keeping that in mind that instead of the correction model in the um, focusing into empowerment, we're looking more at the learning model. You know, and a great saying in NLP, that uh, NLP has some guiding principles that we often talk about. And one of those guiding principles is there is no failure, there is only feedback. Or I like to say there is no failure, there is only learning. So it's keeping in mind that the whole process of life is about learning. And also if we apply that to empowerment, learning to be empowered or empowering others, it's also a process of learning. Okay, a couple of other uh, blocks to empowerment, and I'm gonna just, read these quickly. We're not going to focus on each one. Uh, fear of rejection. Of course, we have huge social fears. As humans, we're hardwired to connect with people at a social level and to be social. So fear of rejection actually goes even deeper to kind of hits on fear of survival. As humans, we can't 
uh, we don't have sharp teeth, we don't have claws, we can't really kill things on our own, so we really need a tribe. Um, so I think that's why fear of rejection is so ingrained for so many people. It even goes to survival. Now, some other blocks to empowerment are like belittlement or less than, thinking someone is more than or less than. And uh, those ideas kind of directly go into worthy and deserving paradigms. Also, those ideas are very much ingrained in our social structures as well. Um, other blocks to empowerment, sometimes it's just about capability or skill, or even recognizing or valuing your own capability and skill. And then unclear expectations and criteria. Um, if we don't know what's expected of us, how can we follow through and be successful? And then the last one is power struggles. And we won't touch very much on this one, but we'll address it later um, in the program. As we talk about empowerment, sometimes we think we just need to make ourselves do it, get over those fears, feel better, think better, step into that state, which you can. There are some ways to step into that state more intentionally, more focused. However, we also want to keep in mind that in working with people and humans, that we all have brains, and our brain has this set of habits and patterns that are running automatically in the background. And this is where people really feel uh, tripped up. Um, so here we have a picture of neurons in the brain and think of them like as hands with many fingers. So the neurons are the nerve cells in our brain. They link up with other nerve cells. And you can see these multiple nerve cells that have these links. Now, of course, this is an oversimplification, but all of any time we learn something new, the brain is linking up these neurons in a chain through our brain. Now, each time we repeat that or something is similar, like learning to drive a car, learning to tie our shoes, our brain is reinforcing that pathway each time we follow through on that learning or that action. Or each time we think a thought, uh, you know, exercise is hard. Uh, it links up that chain from our experiences and reinforces that pathway. Now, the more that we repeat something, the more it turns it into a habit. So when we repeat something, it goes faster and faster until that habit, that pattern, becomes a default pathway in the brain. So when we talk about dealing with people or understanding people, we want to keep in mind that everyone has these habits and patterns wired into the brain. and Here's another analogy of how the brain works, is the image here of an iceberg. So I like to call this layers of the mind. You know, we have an image of the iceberg here. Typically what we see in an iceberg is the top part that's above the water is a much smaller portion of, our, uh, of the iceberg. It's only about 10% above the water. But this is like our conscious mind, our conscious mind. That's where we do active planning, goal setting mind. I am going to, you know, we set a goal, exercise three times a week or six times a week, seven days a week. And we uh, have the full intention and maybe we even feel really motivated about that goal. But then what happens? Well, you know, other things happen, things come up, we put it off, we procrastinate, or maybe we just run out of steam and then we feel like we've fallen off the wagon. Well, the deeper part of the mind <clears throat> is represented below the iceberg, below the surface, and it's that deeper part that is actually responsible for our recurring habits, patterns, and programs. Anything that our mind is running automatically in the background is really encoded in the unconscious mind. So a good way to think of this is think about uh, your car keys. So you probably know where your car keys are or your phone number. You don't use it often, but um, you remember your phone number. So that information is stored just below the surface, just below our conscious awareness and the subconscious. Subconscious is information that we use recently or frequently, and it's right below the surface, easy to retrieve. 
Now, when we think about our fifth birthday, think about your fifth birthday. Well, when I run this uh, question in a class, you know, nobody really remembers their fifth birthday. You might have one or two people in a group of about 30 or so. But why? It's just stored in the background of the mind. It's stored in the files of the mind. However, it's kind of this deeper layer of the mind that picks up ideas about who we are or what's possible for us. It's kind of but stored in those memory files over time. Our brain has made decisions from our experiences and it's stored in those deeper files. Well, those deeper experiences become the automatic habits and programs of the mind. So this is mostly what keeps people from moving forward is some of how the brain is wired. And our programming, what our brain is running automatically in the background, includes a lot of different things. It includes our past experiences, so all our history is stored in the archives of our mind. Our cultural environment, where we grew up, and even the attitudes in the a place where we grew up are kind of stored in those files as well. We also inherit our parents' belief systems, and we also inherit generational belief systems. And of course, uh, here's a quick story about generational beliefs. We still have beliefs running through our culture from the time of the Great Depression. Of course, the Great Depression, you know, nobody, there was shortage, nobody had money, hard time buying the things they needed. Um, one example, I remember asking my mom, Mom, why do you have all of this stuff stored? You know, she had a big warehouse that had lots of extra things stored in it. And I asked her, where did this come from? Why did you feel like you had to keep everything that you were given? And as she got quiet, kind of went internal, and uh, she said she remembered, she's like, I remember when I was a little girl, I was taking a piece of string to the waste basket, basket. And she said, my mom stopped me and said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm gonna throw out this piece of string. And her mom said, no, 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 don't throw it out. If you throw it out, it'll never come back around. So she pulls a jar of string down from the cupboard, unscrews it and has her put the piece of string in the jar and then puts it back. So we can, recognize something so common as string, but in that period of time, it was a, a very scarce kind of economic system. People didn't have jobs. It was hard to get capital or money or food even to support their needs. And so these generational beliefs, even though now we're in a time of plenty, uh, my mom's unconscious mind is running these patterns and programs Oh, you have to save everything that you get. You, if you don't save it, it's, it's not going to be there again. Okay, so generational beliefs. Definitely money patterns can show those a lot as well. Money patterns, uh, social patterns, social fears kind of go with that as well. Um, our judgments, our labels, how we see ourselves, how we see what's possible for us can also be part of what's encoded in the deeper automatic part of the mind. Our opinions, our decisions. Our decisions about who we are and what's possible for us are pretty much set by the time we're seven, seven years old. Think about a child's brain. Are they really good at filtering about what uh, ideas to take on or what ideas to not take on? So if mom comes home and yells, a child's brain is like, oh, she's yelling at me, I must be a bad person. They don't necessarily have that filter to say, oh, mom's yelling, she's had a hard day, rather than they just kind of go to, oh, it must be my fault, I'm bad. So there's a lot of ways that our brain can pick up these old ideas, these negative ideas, these unempowering beliefs, ideas, and attitudes that then show up in our lives in different ways. So uh, another way to think of this, these programs of the mind is like the blinders on a horse that uh, when they actually put blinders on a horse so the horse isn't distracted because they have a lot of peripheral vision, but putting those blinders on the horse 
has a more focused vision. So when we have these ideas, and let's say, for example, a money belief, money is hard to come by. It's like these blinders that then focus our automatic mind on money is hard to come by, and then that's what we see. That's what we notice. Those are the jobs that we choose. And then because those are the jobs we choose, that's the experience we have. They're like self-fulfilling prophecies. And you can recognize these beliefs, I call them mental blocks, as these overgeneralizations about life. Money is hard to come by. There's never enough. Um, money doesn't grow on trees. I'm on a money kick right now, I guess. So there's things to recognize that any kind of overgeneralization is probably running some program, automatic habit or pattern in your mind about that topic, about that thing. So this brings us to keys of empowerment. We can recognize those places where we feel unempowered and we mostly recognize it as a feeling, an inability to make a decision, not feeling like we have permission to move forward with a, a task or not being able to speak up. So we kind of recognize those places where we feel unempowered, but how do we build into the positive? What are these keys that really help us move forward in boosting our power or even helping others to do that as well? So I like to think of it as a process and there's several pieces along the way. Here's an overview of the program and in the series, Empowering Self and Others, we're going to be addressing these major roadblocks to empowerment, building up belief, building up potential, building capability, and also stepping into the higher awareness of belief in others as they're moving forward and creating, helping them to create that, that path for themselves. So here's some of the skill sets that we're going to cover. Using language as a skill. There's so many people are using language in how we're speaking, taking it for granted, but you're gonna get really clear with understanding some nuances of language. In fact, uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, the middle piece is all about language, how language interrelates to our brain, our focus, what we experience, what we feel internally a lot can be conveyed through language. And the next one is how to speak to different personality styles. And just like we covered tonight, that there can be different, everyone has a history, our brains are all running different patterns and programs. And when you start to understand what those habits, patterns, and programs are that are running a person, you learn to help them stay more motivated, more consistently, because you can essentially speak their language. You can speak to what their brain is sorting for, what their personality style is sorting for, uh, rather than just speaking in your, speaking to yourself or from your own perspective. And then we're also gonna look at how to unhook some of these brain habits, the blinders, those filters in the mind, if you will, that aren't working. Most people have um, a bunch of these. For any area of life that feels stuck, there's usually a few of these brain habits that are keeping the blinders on, that are keeping things stuck and keeping us from seeing our solutions. And then we're also going to cover powerful questions. There is a magic to asking the right questions. The right question can be the difference between you know, something that changes the course of your life. We're also going to cover clear expectations, how to create clarity. And once again, this applies to yourself as well. How do you create clarity with yourself and with your clients? How will your clients know that you are succeeding or that they are succeeding? How do you know when you are succeeding? Um, so creating clear expectations, then also wisdom perspectives. And there's a whole lot more, but I really wanted to share some of these highlights here. So in the series, Empowering Self and Others, there are two tracks. One is the personal track that you're welcome to take, just the online course series. And the other is the professional series, which you can take the online series. Plus, we have um, 
classes meeting in person where we get together to really use and apply the NLP skills, neuro linguistic programming, to help the brain switch what it's running automatically in the background, to change those habits, patterns, and programs that are running our life, even at the unconscious level, we can help the brain make a switch. So the page to register, you can give me a call, my number there, or go to thebraintrainerllc.com forward slash classes with dates and times in my life and my clients' lives. And if you're a parent, teacher, coach, manager, if you're working with people at all, understanding how our brains work as humans and how to inspire people uh, rather than using the carrot and the stick, to inspire people to greater levels um, is such fulfilling and rewarding work. So I look forward to talking with you soon. Give me a call if you have any questions. Or if you go to the braintrainerllc.com forward slash classes, you'll see a blue button on the right hand side. Go ahead and schedule a free consultation with me. The blue button on the right side says schedule a session, click on that and pick a free consultation. I'm Holly Stokes, the Brain Trainer, and I'll see you on the other side.